This question looks insane, but once again, Desmos to the rescue. So we can do this without this if you just are comfortable with function notation, but no matter what, you're gonna wanna get rid of this D because that is just some random constant, right? They just say it is a constant, there's no restrictions whatsoever, and we want to have an actual equation. And if we try putting this in Desmos, it's gonna force us to pick a value for D because it doesn't have to graph something with this missing like letter here. So just hit the button, right? So I'm gonna hit uh, D here, and it defaults to D equals one. Now, if I were doing this by, my, by hand with arithmetize, my initial thought would have been D equals zero, but if you look at these answer choices, that's not gonna really work because then we have um, these kind of uh, undefined points, and so that's no good. So D, I'll settle for D as one, that's fine. So what does this get me? Well, okay, we have two equations, right? We have the original one. This is my f of x, so I can turn them on and off. It's the green. But what do they want from us? Which of the following represents the x-intercept of the graph of y equals f of x plus nine in the xy plane where D is a constant? So we've got our original f of x. We've got D as a constant now equal to one. We're gonna turn off the original because I don't care about it. I wanna get this new one, this shifted graph. And Desmos is amazing. What it allows me to do is just tap and get an x-intercept, right? Any, any intercept is gonna be a tappable point for pretty much every equation. So negative 1.267, I'm gonna write that down. Negative 1.267. Because basically, uh, yeah, that's what I'm looking for now. That is the x-intercept. But obviously that's not an answer, but I can turn all of these answer choices into um, numbers for x by using d equals one. So I'm not gonna use the Desmos calculator because these are kind of crazy looking. So instead, I'm just gonna go to my regular calculator. Let's get plenty of space here. So remember, if we plug in one, a lot of this is easy. So negative 126 times one is negative 126 minus 26 over 120 times one is this. This is easy for our handheld calculator. So negative 126 minus 26 uh, divided by 120 is negative 1.26 repeating, so 267. So that seems good, but of course, it's possible that multiple answers give me that value, but I'm gonna just go through all of them, right? So nine minus 126 plus 17 over 120. So I'm gonna do that by doing 126 plus 17 divided by 120, and I'm gonna do nine minus that answer, so you should know where your second answer button is. I got mine right, uh, I don't know if you can see it, but it's right there uh, on my calculator, so that's good for doing things uh, very quickly that uh, you, instead of remembering the numbers, so this is gonna be 7.08, uh, 7.808, so no, that doesn't work. Uh, this is gonna be negative 38 over 120 plus nine. So negative 38 divided by 129 is negative 0 0.29 something, no. And this is 126 plus 26, not even a fraction, this is a huge number. That's it, done. No real issues here. This explanation is way better than the College Board's explanation, which is insane. Why would we wanna work with such crazy fractions by keeping the D alive as a D? Don't do that. Just work with it as a number because if it's a constant, it's any number, it's any number we want it to be. We made it one and if we adjust it, we can see the graph slightly shifts, but because the numbers are big, it doesn't seem to move around too much, but that's okay, like it defaults to one. What happens if we pick zero? Yeah, it goes away. So if we, if we make it six, fine, we're gonna get a different value here, but again, Desmos takes care of all that and then we'd have maybe some more annoying things to plug into our answer choices, but you know, you could. And you could have typed all of these answer choices uh, as points into Desmos. I think that would have been very time consuming. You could have done that with the, the D as well and you would have seen little points on this graph and only one of them would have been exactly where the uh, purple, in this case, crosses the X axis. Um, and no matter what if, what D, D is, we move the slider, that point would have moved with the graph to that same spot. So that's one way to do it, but if I can avoid typing in Desmos, I, that's usually the way to go because I find it tedious. That's why I do recommend having a handheld calculator with you on test day. You are allowed one, so don't let the proctor tell you no. Uh, you are allowed one and it is easier to do, I think, most normal, simple calculations on that and then save Desmos for the, the cool stuff like this.